Stas23 here, and today's knife therapy, we could be taking a look at the strongest pocket knife in the world for the money. And it's a cold steel. It's not this one. I reviewed this one recently and tested it. This is the cold steel 4 Max Scout. Absolute beast. I own two of them now and the real one as well because I like the knife so much. And if you haven't if you haven't watched the review and hard use testing of the 4 Max Scout that I posted uh, this month, definitely, or actually I think it's last month, definitely go check this one out. But today's video is going to be on the S r1 light now it's not light because of the weight they call it light because of the price tag this knife comes in at 42 dollars on amazon for the tanto and 40 dollars for the clip point now a few weeks back you could get the drop point for like 30 bucks or 28 bucks or something like that something absurd and that happens quite often so if you're interested in this knife and you want to try to wait you could probably get it for a good bit cheaper um, just wait for one of the sales to come across on amazon um, but when i picked this one up it was at i think it was 42 dollars and <laughs> what you have here is you know of course some reduction in materials because of the price um, you have a very massive massive uh chunk of 8cr 13 mov now because of that, it kind of turned me off for a while because I, I don't like HCR13. It's it's not the it's not that great of a steel. It's kind of soft. Um, but cold steel, whoever does their OEM work in Taiwan, usually does a great job with the heat treating on these knives. Um, so I wanted to see if that was the same thing with their HCR13 MOV because I was blown away by the AUS-10. It did very, very well. <clears throat> so you have American style Tanto here, big old billboarding on the uh, knife, gigantic thumb studs to go along with the gigantic blade stock, more billboarding on this side, but it doesn't really matter to me because what I see this knife as is a dedicated pack knife this one stayed in the glove compartment of my truck for the longest time just in case i had an emergency 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 situation and i needed a tough knife um and another great thing about that is is at 42 dollars, i'm okay with it staying in the, in the glove compartment never getting used uh you know it got used a whole lot in this video and you'll see here soon but i i wanted to test out a few things i want to test it out you know just as some minor edge holding like some of my normal testing and then we're gonna we're gonna put in some work and i want to see how well this sr1 light can can handle you know some of those tough tasks like the 4 max scout so without further ado let's let's get into this testing and i hope y'all enjoy this let's start cutting up some stuff I first want to get started on some of the normal EDC uh, real world tasks I usually do in my testing because this is this is 8CR13 MOV. I just want to see how well the edge held up for this type of stuff and uh, see how well it performed. Right off the back, I noticed the edge had a really uh, nice bite to it and it was kind of shocking me right now. Um, tried to use that Tanto, I tried to use the, the secondary Tanto point where the two sections intersect. And I did a lot of cutting right there. I noticed where I could start the cut. As you can see right there, I'm starting it with the tip of that secondary point that a Tanto makes. And uh, it, it's slicing well. Uh, I, was <laughs> I was more than shocked. And I just wanted to see if the 8CR had a good heat treat on it like they do with their AUS-10. Um, and so far, so good. We're just going to go through the normal stuff. And here, I just, it was just kind of funny because that stippling was kind of hurting my hands. So I had to wear gloves the whole time. I just decided to chop some three quarter, I mean, some half inch sisal rope just for fun. And this is another one that's shocked me. It was blazing through that. But all it takes is a sharp edge to do most of your EDC tasks. Now, once it starts to go dull, you're going to know very quick, unlike something that's super thin behind the edge. It'll cut a lot longer and it'll feel sharp for a lot longer as well. Um, but so far, doing excellent. And uh, we're gonna start the hard use stuff here in a minute. 
you get started with the three copper wires try to chop through that now this it, it definitely struggled on this I think mainly because of it being a straight edge like that um, I noticed the belly usually goes through it rather easily and it's it's it might have lost its uh, bite too as well from doing all the testing before that because if it's not sharp It's not gonna go through this that easy and it did take a little bit of damage But I mean you'll see nothing that I would be concerned with nothing that wouldn't come out after the first sharpening or two Let's see you can see the light reflecting up there in the front and it basically just crinkled the edge which you know Not that big of a deal. I didn't think it would hurt it that bad because this is some thick behind the edge material so you have a lot of uh, material to go through the the wire so now we're about to do some tip testing and this one didn't have the best tip from the factory it wasn't terrible but it wasn't a super pokey tip um, this is just some galvanized metal I got from the uh, dollar store and it's you know it's it's a it's thinner stuff but you know you do this with a a thin behind the edge knife yeah you're gonna mess it up I had to use the mallet on this one because it was uh, shocking. I tried to do it without, and it, I don't know if I'd use this one or not, but it, it definitely put some shock through my whole arm on the knife I did before this. So I decided just to use the mallet. Now, something to note, this knife does not have any liners. So I'm also testing out that handle by hitting it like that, and I'm hitting it fairly hard to go through this galvanized. As you can see, it's going all the way through. And that handle's taking a lot of shock. So it's just a, a polymer handle. I don't know exactly. Grivery, I think they call it. And uh, it's some thick stuff. You can't really flex it that much, but it's pretty impressive. The backspacer is the same material. And we'll check out that tip. And the tip is unscathed. Absolutely perfect. And I didn't expect anything less. Now I've done this many times before. Opened a can at the campsite because I didn't have my, my can opener. Usually I have a Swiss Army knife to do this whenever we're out in the woods or something. But uh, I used a paramilitary to do this one time and it jacked it all up. Um, it, it, the edge was just wrecked and it scratched a whole lot. That was something I was kind of shocked. Um, I did this with this knife and the, um, the 4 Max Scout. And it didn't really leave any scratches whatsoever. I mean, I didn't go too deep into the can once I got through because, I mean, I'm not purposely trying to scratch it. And whenever I was in the campsite, I just wanted to open it up. And you also want to be careful that you don't go through the can into your hand. Now we're gonna do just some tip testing. And that tip is so stout, um, I wasn't really worried about it. Uh, this is not something you would wanna do. None of the stuff really after the regular stuff is something you'd really wanna do, do for a folder. But I'm just basically trying to see, you know, if you wanted to get a knife to put, say, leaving your, your truck or car in the glove compartment or something for a emergency situation, you wanted to make sure you could rely on it to do something crazy with or you know whatever or had to survive with I wanted to see if this would be a viable option um, I'm using the mallet right now to uh, try to get it to go deeper and a few of these I, I was like ah, maybe I could snap this and I'm sure I could if I wanted to like if I put it in some hardwood this is pine um, I could probably you know force it to break but I mean you could do that with just about any knife so, you know, I didn't really see the point there. I just wanted to see, you know, if the heat treat was good enough to withstand, uh, you know, just a, a light duty abuse. And I think it held up perfect. I'd love to hear what y'all think after this. And uh, let me know down in the comments what y'all think if y'all own one. I did, like I said, have to wear gloves the entire time because that stippling just tore up my hands. But, you know, 
if you're planning on grabbing a knife to do some crazy stuff with, you should have gloves anyway. I, I keep gloves in the glove compartment with this knife. Uh, now I think I'm gonna, I think I might swap it out for the Four Max Scal just because I, I like Austin a little bit better and I like that blade shape a little bit better. But this is definitely a great option if you don't want to spend uh, the extra money on the Four Max Scal. One thing that I really did a successful job on is uh, making my uh, garage filthy dirty. I had wood chips everywhere, shards of metal from the can and some other stuff all over the place. I'm always making a big old mess for you guys, for y'all entertainment. Hope y'all enjoy this type of stuff. You know, like I said, I know this is abuse. I know this is something you shouldn't be doing with a knife, but I enjoy doing it. And I paid for it, so whatever. <laughs> And some people want to know if their their knife can handle this type of stuff if they had to use it for that. So that's why I do it. I know some of y'all get upset whenever y'all see me do these type of videos, but you know if I get enjoyment out of it, that's that's on me. Wow, I gotta say that was pretty darn impressive. I, I don't know if y'all are impressed. I'm impressed. Uh, I did not expect <laughs> the HCR to hold up. As well as it did um, on the regular testing stuff I did now I will say whenever I finished the those uh, those first tests that I normally do the edge was pretty um, it was pretty dull up here in this area at the at the last very last uh, portion of that testing but I guarantee you that I could have hit it up on a strop and got it right back to where it was whenever I got it so that is one positive with the HCR 13 but let's get into the action real quick it's one thing that I like about the knife as long as you have your finger up here in this trial area you can drop it and it's gonna land uh, with this little portion this the sharpening trial portion which uh, they did a good job on clearing that plunge you can also choke up nice and comfortable <laughs> now it's riding on phosphor bronze washers with a very thin Teflon washer over the top. Cold Steel does that with just about all their knives. And I must say, this thing is buttery smooth. Very, very smooth. And um, I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I can even flick this one out. Yeah, flick it out. It's not the most comfortable flick out because of the edge of that thumb stud is a little uncomfortable. But I, I'm not worried to I'm not worried about this being something fast to come out of the pocket. Um, the, the triad lock on here is not the most, uh, a lot, some of them are very hard to disengage. Now it does have a lot of pressure. You're going to have to have some thumb strength, but I can do it without a problem. Um, now let's check out these scales. You have this stippling on this Griv Grivex or whatever they call it. It's basically a plastic handle. Now, they do not have any stainless steel liners. That is just a plastic. I can uh, I can squeeze that as hard as I can, and I'm not worried about it breaking. And if you didn't see in the video, I was pounding on the top of this with that, um, that, that rubber-faced strike mallard, and I did not separate the scales and didn't really deform them that much. I was kind of shocked. I thought I would at least have some, you know, some jagged spots up here now whenever i was hitting uh the top of the spine to go through that that copper wire i did I don't, and i was kind of shocked about that by this especially since I, it didn't get any scarring here i did get some scarring you can see it right there did get a little bit of scarring on the top of the spine but you know whatever it, it it's not going to matter um the handle grip Back to it, that stippling for my hands is uncomfortable after, you know, uh, whenever I start cutting stuff that I'm putting pressure through. It wasn't the most comfortable. Now, it does offer a, a decent bit of grip, and especially when you have gloves on, the traction was very, very nice. Um, <laughs> the, the balance is pretty darn good. Look at that. That's pretty impressive being that you have such a thick stock and then you have just the plastic with the back spring right here. That's pretty impressive that they were able to do that. Um, now, I, well, I said this on the 4Max Scout video. You have a nice big pivot up here in the front that is a T15. But why did they do this? They got T6 everywhere else. It just doesn't really make sense for you know such a beefy knife. 
Um, the pocket clip, once again, it just like all the others, is very, very tight, and it's sitting on top of that um, stippling. So this is a, a pocket shredder. I was trying to carry this in and out of my shorts pocket just to see how it felt because I have to wear shorts the majority of the time. Um, and you could hear it. All righty. You're definitely going to know you have a knife in the pocket. That's all I'm going to say. Let's listen to this. So, yeah, this is definitely a pocket destroyer. Now... One good thing about that much tension, you know it's not going anywhere. But the the weight on the bottom of this knife, it wouldn't have went anywhere if you wouldn't have had this strong of a clip. But I've never really liked cold steel clips that much, but at least you have something to grab a hold to to pull it out of the pocket. And um, it's pretty uh, narrow in this dimension, so it stays up against the pocket fairly well. But I did notice it like slapping my, my, uh, my thigh quite often. Now let's check out the weight real quick. First off in grams, 195.7 grams and 6.9 ounces, which is not absurd. Uh, I, I can definitely carry that and I can carry it fine. But for me, it doesn't really matter because like I said, this is one that stayed in my truck uh, glove compartment. And now it's going to get retired into one of my packs because the uh, 4Max Scout is taking its place since I got a, another one of these. We'll just touch on the lockup real quick. Of course, you got the uh, famous triad lock that Andrew Demko uh, designed. It's a st super stupid strong lock, and I definitely don't think you have to worry about this failing. You will more than likely break the blade before you, this lock disengages on you. So super solid. I mean, after all that, I have absolutely no play up and down or left to right. Uh, sometimes you will get a little bit of up and down like minor rock and that's just because you have that extra space from the lock so the lock can wear down into that hole so it's nothing to be concerned with because that pin is is keeping it to where it can't jump itself out because that the hook on this thing that that's fallen into that is like angled a little bit so the excellent, excellent uh, design there. Demko just does some amazing stuff. I, I wish he was still doing some stuff for Cold Steel, but I understand. Some quick size comparisons with some of its brothers. You have the 4Max Scout, which is just a hair longer. Um, I have them pivot to pivot. And then you have the Recon 1 that is very, very close in size. The Recon 1 is just a hair shorter. Next up, we have the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Large Voyager. The Voyager is about the same overall length um, and about the same grip area. The uh, Rat 1 is a, a good bit shorter in blade and in overall length. Nitpicks and complaints. Of course, I could say the ATR, but I would have much rather see him use OS 10, but at the price point, it's, it's fine. This is for people that are trying to find something on a budget that's super strong. Uh, also, the stippling pretty aggressive but it, it's supposed to be and uh, the only thing I really wish I wish they would have put this pocket clip on a smooth spot uh, so it doesn't destroy pants if you decide to put this in your pants or lighten up this tension a little bit but it's still gonna be on top of here so my overall thoughts at $40 at $42 or $40 or even cheaper is it a good value uh, no doubt about it I have recommended this to several people that wanted a good budget knife to keep in a backpack, like I said, like I do, or in their truck, but they didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money being that. That's all its job was going to be. And if you don't want to spend the extra money for a Scout, definitely, definitely good option. Or if you want, you know, the more uh, streamlined as far as this way in the pocket, if you happen to want to carry it, because the Scout is a lot uh, heftier. And as you can see, let me show you this way. It is a lot wider too. There you go. So there you go. I hope y'all enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Oh, peace.